Hi everyone. Today we're going to go over the different type of weld joints. Go over how to prepare them and how to stick weld each joint. This is really good practice for somebody who's new to welding, but it also can be good for an expert to brush up on some skills. I have here pieces of 8 inch thick flat stock. This is good stuff to practice on. It's stuff that you can get from any hardware store. We'll fit them up, show you rod techniques. All I did is cut them with my bandsaw at 6 inch lengths. That way we can take these and do joints. With that being said, let's get started. First one we'll talk about is a butt joint. Okay, Mat meeting two edges up and putting them together just like that. Um, I will flash the diagram that comes right out of the WIT book, Welding Information Technology book. Pretty much a American Welding Society's Bible for CWIs. And then I also flash different edge preparations that you can have. So you can prep these edges any one of those ways you so choose. This is just going to be an edge joint. We're not going to do any preparation because it's only eighth, eighth inch thick. So the rods that I have here should penetrate this more than enough for what I would need. Butt up the ends, get them as flat as possible. You would take a little bit of space. I'm going to leave just enough space to get some light through it. Now this weld, the way I'm going, I'm going to tack it each end, this is going to want to bow up. That's just the nature of the warp. If you want to fix that, there's a way to post heat it in order to get it to lay back down. Your travel angle, straight on, 15 degree leading angle, and just dragging across. And then when you get to this edge here, you're going to leave about an inch or so, or more if you feel like it, and then start on the tip here and bring it in. Because if I was to weld this and just run it all the way down, by the time I get here, my arc blow is going to be so bad that I'm actually going to blow this out and you're going to have a half moon crater in here. So the easiest way to mitigate that is to run down most of the way, get a good stopping point, and then start over here and all that now. Next one we'll talk about, corner joint, just like that. And with this, here's the diagram, here's the different edge preparations. Again, we're just going to do a flat edge, and you can either do a weld, depending on what a drawing says if you're welding at a fab shop, or depending on how, what strength you need or where you can weld. You can weld on the outside here, or you can weld on the inside. This would be more like an edge weld. This would be more like a fillet weld. Just making up a corner joint. We're going to match up the edges. We want. We want this back side nice and flush up against it, and we'll put two tacks, one on each side. Now we will obviously want this as much of a right angle as we can get, unless there's a drawing that says otherwise. So what I'm actually going to do, because this stuff is so thin, is if this is a right angle, I'm actually going to cheat it back a little bit, because the heat that I'm going to put into this piece is going to pull this back straight. So I got a quarter joint fit up here. We're going to consider this a 90 degree fit up. So since it's a 90 degree fit up, my travel angle is going to be half. So since this is 90 degrees, I'm going to want this at a 45. And I'm going to want to drag the puddle at a 15 degree angle. Along a nice, smooth, even transition. 7018 rod, you can either just drop and drag it, or you can do a little bit of motion. A lot of people do a little bit of a weave motion, which is what I do just to keep myself at a steady pace. And this angle could change too, depending on how close your ground is and what the puddle is doing and whatnot. So the 45 degree is a good place to start. And then after that, if you've got to adjust it a little bit to get this weld to be even on both sides, because you want to tie these 
pieces in evenly, then you go ahead and do it. Just a little bit of spatter here, and the fact that I got the way this bead laid indicates that I am running just a tad too hot. So I will turn myself down to about 80 amps from now on. Third joint is a T joint. Because it looks like a T when you flip it upside down. This is the most common one that people learn in welding school. This is the most common one that people see when they're doing practice. This is very similar to a corner joint, except you have fillet welds on both sides. Here's the diagram. Here's the edge preparations. But that's basically it. Match your edges up. Now again, what I'm going to do when I tack this thing is I'm going to cheat it just a little bit. Get my tack on the corner. Bring it back up almost straight. So that way when I go to weld this thing, when it starts warping and moving around, it starts moving towards the weld. So I will start same thing as the corner joint weld. It's going to be half your angle, so 90 degrees, half of that's 45, 15 degree lead angle, and just drag in a little bit of motion again. It should be good. Lap joint. This is technically a fillet weld. There's not a lot of metal here, but that is technically a fillet weld because of the geometry of it. Here's a diagram and edge preparations. Again, pretty popular weld that a lot of people do. So, lap joint, what I will do personally, unless a drawing says otherwise that I can't, is I will tack the two corners up here, flip it, and then tack these two corners and run about an inch on each side. And then if a drawing calls for just welding one side, then I'll weld the whole side out. If the drawing calls for welding everything out, then I will weld everything. Lap joint. Now last, but certainly not least, and certainly probably the most difficult weld, parallel edge joint, like that. This is a weld that goes along the edge here. Now for this, I'm going to use a thinner rod because of how thin this material is. Here's the diagram, and then here's the edge preparations. Save the best for last. Parallel edge joint. Get all your edges lined up. Tack your four corners. One, two, three, four. And blow around the edge. Now again, I'll put an inch here and an inch here and then blow this whole edge out. That way we don't get any warpage because it's going to want to pull everything up to break those little tacks. So we want to put some nice meaty ones in there. The 332 7018 is too much metal for this. It is doable. It's just this, the 564 is going to be, it's going to look prettier. Yeah, box says 25 to 60. I'll run 60. I think 60 will be good. You want the space to close up as tight as possible because if you don't, you're going to start getting a lot of undercut and melt through and it's going to fold in and it's, it's not going to be pretty. Parallel edge joint. Came out pretty good. Well, those are the five basic joint preparations that you see in structural welding. Like I said, this is stuff that you can practice at home. You can get pieces of flat stock like I have here and cut them down in the four, five, six inch sections and practice all these. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this and I'll see you later.